Hey there, Fletch from All Things Overlanding here. Today I wanted to talk about a topic that I've kind of touched on before, but for those of you that are newer or maybe haven't seen this before, I, I'm currently doing what I'm going to be talking about in this episode, so I kind of wanted to touch on it because it is timely and pertinent for what's going on with me. I, today I'm going to be talking about how you don't need like a really huge, big old built-up rig to go overlanding. And a lot of people all the time are like, what do I need to get? What size lift? What size tires, right? Like those are big questions that you see on forums and Facebook groups and things like that from people. What's the best rig to buy to go overlanding? And there are a lot of opinions, right? Get a Tacoma, get a Frontier, get a Nextera, get this, get that, right? Like get all these different vehicles and everybody has their own opinion. What I will say about that is I don't think it matters. And on this episode, I'm going to kind of show you what I'm driving today currently, and I'll tell you a little bit why. But I'm going to demonstrate to you exactly why it does not matter. Like, it really doesn't matter. You don't have to just drive a big old huge lifted truck that's horrible, you know, 355 days out of the year that you use 10 days out of the year to go camping. You can drive a totally normal car and still get out and explore and have a good time camping and overlanding. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, stay tuned. All right, guys, so as I mentioned in the intro, today I'm talking about why you don't need like a super huge, super built up rig to go overlanding. Um, and I'll show you what I'm driving. So today I'm driving my sort of daily driver. It's a 2007 uh, Lexus IS 350. Fun little car, fun to drive on the highway down here. I'm about two hours from my house down in Hoosier National Forest, but uh, my truck broke. So my actual main like, it, you know, purpose built Nissan Frontier broke. Well, something in the rear broke with it. So I was supposed to be going camping this weekend. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to miss it just because the truck broke. So we'll just take the Lexus. We'll take the daily down there. And uh, it's actually been a ton of fun. So I'm going to kind of walk you around the Lexus. I'm going to show you, you know, kind of a little bit about what this car is and why it is definitely not like the ideal thing for overlanding. But I'm also showing you like I've driven it into Hoosier National Forest quite a ways. And I'm up in a, you know, fairly off-roady kind of spot here. Um, now, obviously, I'm not going to go down in those ruts or anything back there, but uh, but I, had, I it's been fine. I drove it up here, and it's been just fine, and it's super reliable and comfortable and has a bunch of features and stuff. So anyways, I'm going to walk you around the car a little bit, tell you a little bit more about it, and show you just why, if I can do it in this, you can do it in anything. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is my 2007 Lexus IS 350, uh, about 306 horsepower. It is a fun little car. Great, great. The three and a half liter six cylinder from Toyota Lexus and this six-speed auto gearbox that come with it, this one's a rear-wheel drive, um, are great. They're bulletproof. This thing has 124,000 miles on it. Drove like a top the whole way down here. No weird noises, no weird sounds. Super comfortable, heated and cooled seats. You know, air conditioning, sunroof, all the sort of normal, you know, late 2000s tech features that you might expect from a car like this. But, you know, primarily it is a rear-wheel drive sports sedan. It's a smaller sedan, so it is definitely not intended for... Uh, overlanding right or camping and you can see I've blacked out the grill I put this little uh, lip spoiler on it I have put just some other nice aesthetic things on it these wheels came on it actually but I don't hate them um, but again they have summer tires on them they are it's rear wheel drive it is not meant for off-roading I did add this little lip to the rear window back here this like roof spoiler and then this sort of duckbill spoiler and then I put a new axle back on it just to make it sound a little bit better it had a little bit of an exhaust leak so I wanted to kind of remedy that with some nicer uh, exhaust. But other than that, it is bone stock. It is, you know, going to be going under the knife a little bit here. I'm going to be putting coilovers on it and uh, and also some strut tower braces so that it handles a little bit better and is a little even more fun to kind of throw around on the roads. But when I do that, it will be even less practical for this kind of thing. But so even in its current state, I've got just a little bit of clearance, right? <laughs> Not too much. Definitely low to the ground here, but plenty of clearance in a stock height vehicle, even a sporty sedan type of vehicle, you have tons and tons of room to go to most of these places. Now, are you going to go to Moab and go off-roading in this thing? No, obviously not. And the rear wheel drive also does not help that. But my point is, you can definitely still get out and explore. You can get out and find new things. This campsite that I'm in right now, I've never found before. I literally, this is the first time I found it, and I found it in the car which was actually a ton of fun. Like I just saw this little uh, side spout off the main road out there 
And I was like, huh, what's up there? It looks like the car could go up there. And so I just drove up this little hill and here I am, found this cool little spot. Um, so anyways, you know, you can get out and you can have a good time. The fact of the matter is this thing gets low to mid twenties for gas mileage, which is more than twice what my truck gets. So I drove the whole way down here and I still have three quarters of a tank. So that's kind of a nice benefit of driving something like this instead of like a big old lifted truck. Another really nice thing that you just don't really think about is just how nice the interior of these things are, right? So like, this is why I like to have my big old lifted truck and then also some sort of like a Japanese luxury car. Because like, again, I've got heated and cooled seats. I've got all kinds of nice features in this thing. I've got shift paddles if I want to get a little sporty with it. You know, for the most part, this thing is, is pretty much bone stock, but I've installed this little nice touchscreen uh, deal that has some Apple CarPlay and things like that in it. You know, again, down here, I've got cooled seats, heated seats, so you can kind of toggle through this and make your seats warm or you can make them cold, depending on the time of year. My truck obviously does not have that, you know. It is a smaller sedan, so there isn't a ton of space in here. Um, you can see I've got back here, I've got a, uh, a fridge going right now, running off a little battery pack. So that is my solution for drinks and stuff this, this weekend while I'm out. Got a jug of water back there in the back, and then I've got a bunch of gear in the trunk. So I brought a hammock and things like that. Um, but again, I've got plenty of room for all this stuff with just me going, you know, even with bringing a ton of stuff. I got pillows, I got books, I got extra clothes, like... I mean, I've got a ton of space and a ton of nice features and options in this thing that I don't have in my normal truck. So again, I'm definitely not saying you should go out and get a rear wheel drive or a front wheel drive, two wheel drive, low car for overlanding. What I am saying though is use what you got, right? Everybody that goes on these forums or these Facebook groups and says, what truck should I buy? What vehicle should I get? What SUV should I get? You know, a lot of those people haven't even really tried it. And that's a really big investment. Like they haven't even been on a dispersed camping trip. And they're talking about spending tens of thousands of dollars to buy a vehicle. So I guess what I'm saying is, you know, don't feel like you have to do that before you can go overlanding. Take whatever you've got, get your daily driver, get out in nature, explore a little bit, see what you can do. Learn what you like and what you don't like. Learn how much gear you really need to be able to support your, you know, style of overlanding trips. Once you do that, then you could say like, hey, you know what, for me, I do enjoy it, but it's not something I wanna do every weekend. So I'm just gonna buy like a $6,000 old sort of beater Jeep or something like that, right? That may be fine instead of spending 30 grand and, and changing your whole daily driving routine to get some sort of a big full-size truck or you know, a big lifted Gladiator or you know something like that. You may just want it as sort of a toy that you can drive in the snow and stuff in the winter and you don't wanna spend a lot of money on it. But get out and explore with what you got first before you make that sort of investment. Same goes with gear, same goes with, you know, rooftop tents and fridges and all that sort of stuff. Before you go super crazy, and I'm speaking from experience, I bought a bunch of stuff before I even bought my Xterra. I was already buying Xterra parts because I knew, quote unquote, what I wanted to do, right? And then I got it and I built it. And a lot of the stuff that I did was a waste of money. A lot of the stuff I did was stupid. And I should have just taken that thing out stock for like six months and not even modified it or done a thing. And I probably would have been surprised by what it could do stock. And I probably could have saved myself a ton of money on the stuff that I bought, the things that I thought I needed, the things that I thought I had to get. So anyways, that's kind of my thoughts. Again, I just recommend that you get out, you explore with what you got, you take a little bit more time, you think a little bit more before you start buying. Because it's really, really exciting to just buy new stuff. I have been there a million times. I've wasted a ton of money. But so to save you guys a little bit of money, I hope that that uh, advice is a little helpful for you and you get out there and you try it once or twice or three or five or six times. Get out and go disperse camping with what you got and see what you like, see what you think. And then you can go from there and make a better investment in what vehicle you want to use for your overlanding vehicle. So, but again, I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, click that like button. If you're not already, make sure to click that subscribe button. Click the bell to be notified when new videos drop. I do a vloggy type podcast video like this every week. And it goes up on all major podcast channels too. There's also a Facebook page, an Instagram page, a TikTok page. So wherever you are hanging out, if you want to follow all things overlanding, I'd love to have you. There's also a link to Patreon. And we've got a small but growing number of folks that are on there that we have an exclusive Discord for the folks in the Patreon page where we all kind of chat all the time. We do like a once a month episode where people get to be on the uh, YouTube channel and the podcast. Um, so if that's interesting to you, definitely check out that link for the Patreon page below. And then last but not least, the Newbie Overlanders Facebook group, totally free to join tons of members, different from the bigger pages. So hopefully you like that too. And we'd love to have you over there. Um, but again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we will see you guys next week.